Good morning everybody and welcome to today's Sunday service. My name is Martin and I'll be your host today. And uh, as the Bible says that it is a good thing to gather in the presence of the Lord. And uh, I would like to welcome you once again. For our first time visitors, uh, I would like to give a special welcome to you. And uh, please visit our page on www.afimpact.org. You're going to see uh, uh, on our landing page there is a button there for first time visitors. Please just click there and you can log in your details and so that our team can be able to get in touch with you. Uh, but a special welcome to all of you guys today. Um, let's just, just pray quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for this service that you have um, already planned before the creation of the world. We thank you, Almighty God, that we are going to be here and we are going to hear the word of God today in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, because your word is food for our spirit. We thank you, Father, because we, we, we have this privilege to be called your children. We thank you, Father, that we can gather even during this difficult time using this platform, Almighty God. We thank you, we glorify you, and we know that with your presence, it's going to be a wonderful service today. We thank you, Almighty God, for all the lives that are going to be touched this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. May you touch each and every person who is connected to this program. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. And um, I want to encourage everybody to give. Um, you you see uh, uh, the Zepa app that is going to come uh, under the screen. Um, you can log in there and you can give in. Um, make sure you pay your tithes and your offerings. Um, the Word of God says that don't come to the house of the Lord empty-handed. So it is a good practice for us to give in the house of God. You are also going to see our account details um, that are going to appear next to that app. Um, you can also find them the, uh, on our website that I indicated earlier, www.ifnimpact.org. Uh, www um, I would also want to give special mention to people that have got birthdays this week. And the first one is Tumelo Lenake, Martin uh, Tiku Awa, Tanyaratwa Mapue, Tando Vokani Mwale, Musisiwe Dirapelo, Dona Mushaike. Millicent Molapo Washa and from the AFM family we want to say happy birthday to all of you and may God increase you this year and may this be the best year of your life from this point onwards. Thank you guys and um, this morning we are blessed to have in our midst Bishop Lotti from God's Will Faith Ministries in Dipslut. He's going to be sharing the word with us. Uh, let us pay attention and uh, heed the word of God as it comes to us. Um, at this point, I would like to hand over to the praise and worship team. Thank you, guys.
If that family, now we're doing it African style. I know you're happy at home because Jesus has given us life this morning. Yeah. Can I get a glory? glory. Come on.
be still and trust what the Lord has said and done. Find rest and don't strive. Watch as fate and grace align. opportunity to greet everybody watching and listening today and before we go to this uh, Bible reading to our study today I just want us to go to, to to have a word of prayer before we go to the word Father in the name of Jesus I come before the throne of your grace and I bring everybody Lord in your word that Lord it bring about insight that it bring about lord wisdom in your word there is life in your word there is your power your word is what we trust in jesus mighty name lord we thank you amen uh, friends and family i just want us to take our bibles to the book of ephesians chapter 6 we're going to read from verse 1 to verse number 4 the title of our sermon is mainly about Jesus-centered families. How to build family that is Jesus-centered. Now, it reads so. Children, obey your parents, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first command with a promise, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life. Fathers, do not provoke, provoke your children to anger, but bring them up with love and kindness in the discipline, not violently, and instruction of the Lord. 
Now where we are reading here, this scripture teaches us, directs us as to how to develop families, how to build families in a Christ-centered way. Because we know families were orientated by God. Family begins with God. We know God as the Father. We know Jesus as the Son. And we know the Holy Spirit. Now, if you look at God as the, as the Father, you will see that there is a family. Because each and every family has got a father. Although there is no mother in heaven, reason being, in heaven, reproduction is not like on earth. That's why in the beginning, God said, let us create men into our likeness. And let us make them men and a woman. So in other words, it was both men, except the other one had a womb for the sake of reproduction in this world. So in heaven, God creates, he speaks the word. Whatever that is needed in heaven, God speak it and it come to existence. But on earth, everything has to reproduce itself. And there is no gender in heaven. Because there is no need for gender in heaven. Because reproduction in heaven is not as in earth as I have explained. So there is no need for sexuality in heaven. We are all like angels. That's why there is no marrying in heaven. Now, in this world, we have what we call parenting. Families are built mainly by parenting. And what does the scripture teaches us about parenting? Scripture shows us that men are head of the families or fathers are heads of the families. If you read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3, Paul speaks these words to the church of Corinth. He says, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of every woman is the man. So in other words, Paul is reminding the church here that according to God's order, man is the head of the family. In other words, man is the one that comes first, even according to creation. If you remember very well, in the beginning, the Bible says God first created the first Adam. And after he created Adam, out of his rib, he formed Eve. So man came first. And everything that was named, it was named by man. God gave that authority to man. In other words, God gave man to take a lead. So now here are the responsibilities that comes with being a father in the family. One, we find the Bible saying here, men should love their own wife. In other words, men should lead by love. And secondly, we find that men have to provide for their families. Men have to, 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 to protect the families. Men have to make sure that they get their family looked after in terms of resources. That's why if you read in the Bible, you'll find that men were always working in the farms Men were hunters, whereas women were nurturing families, were nurturing uh, households. So it is the duty and the responsibility of a man again to train his children, to make sure that he teaches his children to live and to walk according to the principles and the requirements of the word of the Lord. That's why the Bible emphasized through Moses that they have to teach their children over and over these principles and these laws so that they can grow to know them. And in the Proverbs, uh, Solomon speaks these words. He says, train up a child in the manner that he should grow. When he is old, he will not forget it. So it is the responsibility of a man, the responsibility of a father to make sure 
that he trains, he grooms his children according to the will of the Lord. And then what is the mother's role according to scripture? We find in the scripture, the Bible teaches us that women learn submission. In other words, it says women should submit to their husbands. They should submit not because they are inferior. They should submit because that is how God has designed them for in this world. And let me show you something about the role of a man and a woman. There is no inferiority uh, complex that God was creating here. Women are not inferior to men, but rather women complete men. A man is completed by a woman and a woman is completed by man. Hence, the Bible says, God saw that it was not good for a man to be alone. He needed a helper. He needed someone to fulfill him. He needed someone to complete him. If you look at most of the things, even in nature, look at the, at, 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 at the battery, for an, for an example. It has got a positive cell, and it also has got a minor cell. A positive cell is without power on its own. It needs a minor cell. So showing that the minor cell is not inferior to the positive, but the minor cell completes the positive in order to discharge currency. So that is how God has created women. That's why many women, when we come to this subject of submit to your husband, some they feel it's like God It's saying they have to be inferior. It has got nothing to do with inferiority. Although we are living in a changed society whereby you will find that most families are now heeded by women because they are the ones that are providers. But that is a subject for another day. And then we find again, women, the role of a woman in a family is to protect her family. Is to nature the family, I wanted to say. Is to take care of the family. Naturally, women know how to nurture. They know how to nurse. They know how to, 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 to take care of the children. They know how to take care of household things. They are very good even in pots. You know, in many times, I try to cook the best in my house, but I cannot beat my wife. If we need the best meal in the house, my wife is the best to do it. I try my best, but I always fail because that is not my role. But when it comes to hunting, getting other things, working in the garden, fixing things, she cannot match me on that because it comes naturally with men. And then now here is another role for women is also to train their children. So raising up children, training up children, it's a responsibility of both fathers and mothers. It's a responsibility of both men and women in order to prepare them for the future. Remember, raising up children it's handing out the baton to the next future. Hallelujah. And now, this is their responsibility, both of them. Now we are living in a society whereby we find many families are heeded or are led by single parents. We have got so many single parents. Although the Bible doesn't teach specifically about single parents, but we see it when it teaches about widows which are mainly heads of the family so when he talks about uh, widows the bible always encourage them to to take care of their family to serve the lord to be loyal on their on, on on the lord and another thing that i always encourage single parents is that single parents it is their responsibility we know and we highly respect it and you know, I've got great respect for single women who take care of their family, who play both father role and mother role at the same time. I really put my hands together for them. But here is another thing that I always encourage women to say. You need to do your best to help your children to at least have a father figure in, in their life. Because I have found that in society, there is a difference between a mother role in the in, in life of a child and a father role. And children need to understand both these roles. 
Because these roles are so important in the life and the well-being of a child. More especially when they are grown up. Because how men are wired is different from how women are wired. And let me make an example. Men are more logical orientated. Men are thinkers. Everything that men does, they do it from the head point of view. But if you look at women, women are more of a feeling people. They are more of led by their emotions. They are more emotional. That's why they are more of nurturing. So now, women, as they are good in nurturing children, men are good in giving children principles. That's why I said women, I encourage them to always have a father. Whether it's a grandpa or it's an uncle in the family, expose your children to that so that they can have that kind of balance in their life that kind of understanding so that as they grow they know how to handle life issues now it is the responsibility of every parent to chill to, to, to teach their children the ways of life to train them on how to live life to the fullest on how to understand life on how to discover their purpose you know most children they don't really know what they are born for and they need the parents to assist them in order to be able to release their god-given purpose i will take an example if you read in the bible about the story of jacob the bible tells us that Jacob was a twin brother to Esau, although Esau was, was the elderly brother and Jacob was the younger. And by right, Esau was supposed to take an inheritance. But according to the will and the purpose of God, it was Jacob instead that had to take that role. Now what we see here, while the children were still in the mother's womb, in Rachel's womb, there was jostling within her tummy. And the Bible tells us that she prayed to God and asked, God, what is happening within me? And God spoke to her. God revealed to her about the purpose, about the plan of the children that were in her tummy. That Jacob is going to rule over Esau. And as he was born, Rachel was there to take care of of, 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 J, of Jacob. Rachel made sure that Jacob fulfills that purpose. She helped him to accomplish that purpose. That is the role of, of a parent. That is the role of a mother. That is the role of a father. To make sure that you help your children to discover and to fulfill their purpose. So we have so much of a great role to play in our children. If you remember also the story of Albert a stain who was reject, rejected at school and then the mother helped her because her, his intellect his intelligence was more than what the school was offering and then they actually wrote him off and said this child is dumb he, he doesn't understand he cannot learn he's a slow learner not because he was a fool but because his IQ was not in line with what they were teaching at that child but the mother discovered and made sure that she built a child. So as a parent, never discourage your child. As a parent, never speak negative words on your child. As a parent, never insult your child. Tell them who they are. Tell them who they become. I always also say that children, they come like an empty CD. When you buy an empty CD, you decide as to what to record in that city. If you put music, it will play music. If you put message, it will play message. So whatever you put in an empty SD card, it's what you will get out of it. So what you put in your child's life, is what you will get. So it is our responsibility to train our children. And above all, is to treat them, raise them with love. Teach them to respect. Respect life, respect others, respect even nature. Because life, it's all about life, love, and 
respect. So I'm going to be praying in closer and praying that God bless you even as we go forward in raising our children, in making sure that we bring them up in the manner that the Lord loves. We bring them up in the manner that tomorrow we will say we have done our best to teach our children. Let's close our eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord. And I pray for more of your grace, O oh God, upon each and every family, every father and every mother, Lord. I pray that, Lord, let your blessing, let your wisdom, let your understanding, Lord, rest upon their lives. Help them, Lord, as they, r they raise their children, Lord, to navigate the issues of life. That, Lord, you give them that wisdom. You give them that courage, O oh God. You give them, Lord, that compassion, that love, that, Lord, never ceases towards their children. And I pray that, Lord, let the fathers of God lead the families in a way, Lord, that is ordained of you. And let the same happen with the mothers of God. Let them not give up in raising the children. Lord, I pray for all the children that, Lord, give them the spirit of understanding and give them the spirit of submission, that they know that everything that the parents are teaching them Everything that the parents are showing them is unto their benefit and for the welfare of their future. And every spirit of darkness that stands against marriages, that stands against families, I come against it by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I come against it by the blood of Jesus. I come against it by the word of God. I speak, I declare, and I decree destruction against every plan of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I thank you. Giving you praise, glory, and an honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. God bless you.
Thank you everybody for, for attending and a special thanks to our Bishop, Bishop Loti, for such a wonderful word that he gave to us. Um, we would like to give a special thanks to him. And um, please share this, uh, this broadcast for those of you that are watching on YouTube, those that are watching on Facebook, just click the share button so that many people can get the program. And also the, 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 the uh, giving details uh, for, for your tithes and your offerings, they will appear again on your screen. Uh, please don't forget to give um, using the Zeppa app or the banking details that are shown on the screen. And um, uh, please don't forget to share. Shall we close in prayer? Thank you, Father, for such a wonderful message that you gave to your children this morning. We glorify your word because we know that your word is going to change our lives. We know that one word from God completely changes our lives. We thank you, Almighty God, that we shall take this word with us, we shall apply it um, in our homes, uh, in our communities where we live. Thank you, Father, because you have served us. Thank you because of your salvation that came through your Son, Jesus Christ. We glorify you, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you honor this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.